Rice benefits our country's economy through foreign exchange earnings and provision of food security. However, there are many challenges that farmers face in rice cultivation, especially dealing with pests. Welcome to another edition of the Science of Rice. I am Carl Gurusami, and this week we will be looking at pests and its control. Over 50 invertebrates are known to affect rice crop in Guyana. They can launch their attack as soon as seeds are sown to the day it is being harvested. However, these invertebrates are grouped according to the stage of crop that they affect. Yes, we have the water weevil for our early season pests, Heloditis, Povilotus, the leaf miner, Hydrella species, the caterpillar, Spolopterra, Fujipera, and the snail Pumaceae species. Our mid season pests are the Stembora, Rupella albinella, and the caterpillar, Spolopterra, Fujipera, and our late season pests are the paddy bugs. If you have a general knowledge of how these pests can affect your crop and the early signs of infestation, then control can be simple. The rice water weevil, Heloditis foveolatus. Both the adults and larvae affect the rice plant. The larvae feed on the root results in, and results in stunted growth and this affects the leaf where you will see yellowing of the leaves. Um, when the roots are weak, most times the plants are easily uprooted. The adults, when they feed on the leaf, they will cause leaf scarring and this is referred to as windowing. The adults rarely cause economic damage but in very large numbers they can feed on the leaf and cause the entire plant to die. The life cycle is complete. So these insects develop from egg to larva to pupa to adult and the duration varies among the different species. The larva in this case is called a grub. No farmer wants to lose his crop. As a matter of fact, he wants the maximum yield. And though water weevil can pose a threat, it can be controlled by simply inspecting the leaves. This is done one week after permanent flooding and what we do is inspect a hundred leaves and if, there are 50, if 50 of the leaves is scarred by what we for adults, we recommend application of insecticides. Other control measures for the what weevil larva is that we uh, drain the entire field until it cracks. Control is very effective 7 to 14 days after flooding. Good field sanitation also assists in reducing water weevil population. Leaf miner is another pest which affects the rice crop in its early stage. The larva cause the most damage. It tunnels into the leaves and feeds on the cell sap, causing it to wilt and die. This can cause reduced tillerin and stunted growth, which delay panicle initiation may occur. This is where we usually recommend draining the field to provide a poor habitat for leaf miner population buildup. Or if um, the leaf miner damage exceeds threshold, we recommend using a systemic insecticide such as Pronto Actara. <music> Another pest that attacks in the early stage of the rice crop is the caterpillar. These pests can also linger in the mid-season if not controlled effectively. The caterpillar Spolopterra fujipera. Caterpillar normally feed on the leaves and what they do is cut the leaves. Um, some control measures for this would be to plow deeply during land prep or when the caterpillar damage exceeds the threshold which is 30 damaged leaves per meter square. Um, we recommend spraying of a contact insecticide such as FASTAC, PESTAC, etc. However, the cultural method of controlling caterpillar is flooding the field 24 to 48 hours. <music> 
snails are another early season pest in rice cultivation. They feed on young and emerging rice plants and can completely destroy a crop during crop establishment. Snail damage results in missing, missing plants or cut leaves. Some cultural practices for snails would be, since snails are attracted to standing water, we recommend good land preparation. Um, another practice is that um, we provide screen is to provide screens at the irrigation canals so as to prevent entry of snails. Another cultural control for snails is to place bamboo sticks to attract adults for laying egg. It will be easy to hand pick snails and crush eggs. This is best done in the morning and afternoon when snails are most active. Stem borer attacks the crop in the mid-season along with caterpillars. The larvae feed on the surface of the leaf before boring into the stem. This damages the stem resulting in dead heart at the vegetative state of the crop. At the reproductive phase, the affected tillers often bear panicles with empty grains, a condition called white ear. The tunneling of the larva also weakens the stem, resulting in lodging. Good field sanitation plays an important part in the control of stem borer. Avoid high nitrogen rates. Synchronize planting. And if the threshold reaches or surpasses the rate, apply contact and systematic insecticides. Another improved practice in which you can implement into preventing early and mid-season pests is by treating the seed paddy before sowing. What we mean by treating the seed is to chemically treat the seed. In this case, we are using insecticides. And there are a number of insecticides that can be used. But common in all these in insecticides that, that are being used at present is this active ingredient, fipronil. So once you treat the seed and you sow it in the field, water weevil cannot affect it. Additionally, the young plant, as, as, it's, as it's growing, the young plant will not be affected by, by leaf miner, caterpillar, stem borer. And the third benefit is the preservation of the beneficial insects. This approach is part of the six points practice and has proven to be effective. It is also being adopted rapidly by farmers throughout the rice growing regions of Guyana. In terms of seed treatment, you, you, in, in a plant like about 30 to 35 days, you don't spray. These practices are all effective and can save your crop. It will benefit all farmers as they harvest high yields in the end of each crop. Paddy bugs are the most dangerous pest in rice cultivation. These little creatures are also known as Gandhi, stink bug, or bush bug, and belong to the true stink bug family. With just two crops per year, one of its major threats is the paddy bug. It is one of the most important pests in rice cultivation. Paddy bug damage is both qualitative and quantitative. It is a major pest because of the extensive damage caused by both the nymphs and adults. When the nymphs and adults feed on the grain, during the milk stage, they extract the milk, leaving when paddy or empty grains. When the paddy bug adults and nymphs feed during the dough stage, the result is grain discoloration or pecky rice. These bugs will attack during the flowering stage of the crop. But there are other factors which can cause these bugs to infest a crop at an earlier stage. There are three main factors responsible. The double cropping system and asynchronous planting. Generally, again, has two rice crops sown every year. And the planting is asynchronous due to constraints such as availability of machines. The effects of these factors are twofold. First, the presence of the crop all year round provides a continuous supply of food 
resource for the bug. This also means that it would be, it would be difficult to synchronize control effects between farmers. Second factor is alternative hosts. Alternative host provides the source of food for the paddy bug when the crop is not in the susceptible stages. Paddy bug would feed on the grasses, on the mares, canals, dams, bonds, on the volunteer rice and red rice, which will mature faster than the rice crop. The third factor is the routine use of pesticides. Pesticides are used routinely to control paddy bugs among other insect pests. It can be expected that these routine applications will have a negative impact on the natural enemies of the bug. The paddy bugs undergo incomplete metamorphosis. The adult paddy bug can live up to 37 days. The female bug can lay 10 to 200 eggs in one generation. These eggs take 2 to 3 days to hatch and the nymphs 15 to 17 days to mature and the cycle continues. There are two species of paddy bug found in Guyana, the Oibalus poecilus and the Oibalus ypsilangraceus. Each crop can be affected by one or two generations of paddy bugs, and the remaining generations feed on alternative hosts. Some of the alt common alternative hosts of paddy bugs in Guyana are the bird seed grass, flower grass, bamboo grass, antelope grass, sour grass, razor grass, the busy busy grass, and trench weeds. Chemical spraying should be the very last resort in paddy bug control. There are other control methods under the Integrated Pest Management Approach, IPM. These are cultural control, monitoring, and biological control. Cultural control includes timely sowing which prevents paddy bug generations from spilling over to the next crop. All farmers should sow at the same time, especially neighboring farmers. If this becomes a culture among farmers, paddy bug infestation will decrease. Proper field sanitation aids in the reduction of alternative food source. Mares, dams, and canals should be kept clean. Field should be robed of volunteer rice and red rice. Monitoring plays an important part in the IPM approach as well. Monitoring is the way in which an insect population and factors influencing it can be observed. There are two major uh, roles of monitoring. One, to give early warnings of the presence of the pest so that early action can be taken. And two, to evaluate ongoing crop protection strategies. This allows farmers to react to the developments in the field by modifying his actions. Monitoring should be done regularly with frequency increased at times of crop susceptibility. Biological control is nature's way of controlling paddy bugs. There are a wide range of predators, parasitoids, and pathogens which are important natural enemies to paddy bugs and friends of the farmer. If you, the reason why we're calling them beneficial insects is that they predate on these other pests in the field. So they are the natural, they are natural control in, for, for these pests in the field, especially, especially in the case of paddy bug. Once, you know, for example, the ladybird beetle, it predates on the egg of, of, the, of the paddy bug. Some of the other beneficial insects, they, 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 they would eat or they will feed on, on, on the nymphal stages of the paddy bug. The spider, in the case of the spider, when that, that, cover, when that spread its web and cover the field, it actually captures the adult, the adult form of the paddy bug. So these, these beneficial insects are very useful in terms of assisting in the control of, of pests. In the rice field ecosystem, they are natural enemies of the paddy bug. For example, the dragonflies, damselflies are a member of the Odonata order. Lady beetles, ladybugs, or ladybird beetles, whatever you may know them as, are among the most visible and best known beneficial insects. There are over 450 species, and many are found right here in Guyana. These beetles are well known as good insects. Most are beneficial to man and friends of farmers. 
So if you ever see one of these insects in your garden or field, welcome it, as you will now have a friend to protect your crop from pests. And lastly, the chemical control of paddy bugs. How you would know when chemical application needs to be done. If a hundred sweep is made in, in the rice field um, and you have 50 and over paddy bugs, like in this case, spraying should be done. Um, this is a measurement for Pronto for one motor blower. The recommended number of motor blowers per acre is two. Um, so we use 7.5 grams for one blower and 7.5 for the other blower. 7.5 grams. So this would be the recommended um, amount for one blower, which would cover half of an acre. First step is rinsing the blower. Step two is halving the motor blower with water. Step three is dissolving the chemical in water. and then throw it into the blow. You cover and you shake for homogeneity. Then we fill the remaining solution into the blow and cover and shake again. All right, first thing when using the motor blower, after mixing the chemical, you set the output adjustment to five. The operator gears up protecting himself. This is very important when handling pesticides. Pesticides are poisons. Precaution that should be taken when handling pesticides. Avoid direct contact with skin, eyes, wear protective clothing when mixing or applying. Do not inhale insecticides or spray mist. Do not eat, drink, or smoke during work. After work, shower and wash clothing. The motor blower is the most commonly used equipment for paddy bug control. It is cal calibrated based on weather conditions, spraying pressure, uniform spray swat, speed of the operator, and surface area to be sprayed. GRDB recommends using two blower per acre, utilizing the wind direction speed. To get coverage, we recommend farmers walk 11 steps apart so that the mist from the blower would overlap. Note the direction in which the extension tube is held. Um, no swaying is done while operating the blower. No swaying of the extension tube, that is. The overlapping of mist is done to provide enough leaf wetness. Pronto being a systemic insecticide has to be absorbed into the plant leaves so that it can be transported to the panicles where the paddy bug would attack and upon feeding, then it will be effective against controlling those bugs. Chemical control of paddy bugs. Misuse and abuse of insecticides often kill non-target organisms that is beneficial insects and leads to pest resurgence, pest resistance and pest replacement. When applying chemicals, farmers must use the correct dose or the rate of application. We had tremendous paddy bugs. When you make like 25 scoops like this, one time we take 1,909 bugs. So me said, bite this thing here too much. So me asked him, man, me said, man, how are we going to count this thing? He said, freeze this thing. So we put it in a ziplock and put it in the freezing room. So he threw this thing out and we decided to count this in one, one. 1,909 bugs, believe it. And that, that is not all. The drugs. What we used to use, like one of the rum carcass, what they said. I mean, I mean, a little much of milligram and this gram, right? right. We're going to learn about that later. Yeah. Half of this rum carc, this man showing his motor blow. And he say, you hold this thing and go one way. And when you reach the head, come back one way. And you believe in me, the result, and why you see there, you see tomorrow man, when you go like this, every man at the bottom. So when you see, we used to look through like two and three, at this room, car cutting your waste drugs and your waste meat time and you time waste some money. On the problem of bugs that we are experiencing, I recommend that we heed the, the, the method of spraying that you walk two walk per one acre of spraying with the same amount of chemicals and you will get better production or control of the bugs. 
Because before I bought a motor blower, I used to walk twice in the field with the same amount of drugs that I would use on the motor blower. And I used to get clean, very pure paddy in the form of without bug damage. But I followed the practice of farmers using several walks on an eight acre plot. But I only walk on one, one walk, but I get more increased bug damage. So what is being recommended now, walking two times per one acre, using the same amount of chemicals, you will get better control of paddy bugs. Paddy bugs are serious pests in rice cultivation. This can cost the farmer his entire crop if not properly managed and maintained. Pesticides are poisons, and therefore the necessary precautions should be taken by operators in its application. Paddy bugs do not give a warning before they attack, but every farmer knows when his crop is vulnerable to infestation. That is why it is in his own interest to take the necessary precautions at first hand. To achieve maximum results, the IPM approach should be practiced by farmers at all times in the management of paddy bugs. This will result in increased quality and quantity of paddy produced and also increased income to farmers. That's all for this week's edition of the Science of Rice. We encourage all farmers to follow these simple steps and this will lead to higher yields when harvesting. Thanks for watching.